Hey, what's up? Welcome into the Daily Score. I am Mark Grody. What happened to our cool open with all the Chicago stuff and coming at you and whatnot? Well, I just found out that we had to go back to the sad, sad countdown because a lot of what's featured on that is Justin Fields. Oh my God. Like we did we do we have to escort Justin Fields out of the system with a security guard? So it's it's not available anymore. Oh man, that's wild. Just because of Justin Fields, some proprietary thing. Oh man, it's a it's the, the new wave of the daily score as we welcome you back in. We are doing the show live from our audio studios. You can see the, the flagship radio station of many teams here in town. Um, and hey, it's pretty perfect that we go from Justin Fields and maybe that closure to moving closer to the Bears potentially drafting USC's Caleb Williams number one overall. There was action today. Caleb Williams had his pro day today. It was the USC pro day today. So he threw and talked to the Bears and had dinner with the Bears. And all of the action was on the NFL network. So it is so perfect that we get to welcome into the Daily Score, Rhett Lewis, as he was the man who was the point person. He was hosting the NFL Network's coverage of the USA USC Pro Day. Rhett, thank you so much for joining us here on the Daily Score. How was the Pro Day, my friend? <laughs> well, Mark, uh, I'm glad uh, you brought that up. I, I do um, I do appreciate you guys having me on. This was, uh, this was a lot of fun, actually. Um, I do love Pro Days. We do a lot of them on NFL Network and on NFL Plus, and um, it's – it's an opportunity I feel like to see guys in their element one more time. Right. And, and just, you know, yeah, they, you know, I think a lot of, you know, a lot of, a lot of folks out there will kind of, you know, poo poo the pro days. It's a controlled environment and all that. Well, if it wasn't important, the bears wouldn't be there. Right. If it, was, if it wasn't a big deal, the teams wouldn't show up. And for the most part, all 32 teams were there um, in this one. And so it, it was obviously, I thought was, this was actually kind of unique because this is the first time we've seen Caleb Williams throw since November 18th, Mark. Mm. Right? I mean, he didn't throw at the combine, wasn't a part of any of the All Star games, didn't play in a bowl game. So it's been almost four months. It's been four months since we've seen Caleb Williams throw, and so there you go. Like it was, I don't, you know, I don't think it was, um, you know, it wasn't the the craziest, most spectacular pro day we've ever seen, but it was everything you could have wanted from him. And so I'll leave it at that. I know we'll dig into it a little bit. Yeah, well, let's let it, let's do that. How did he look in terms of if you're able to capsulize what sort of day he had? And people should know that you know they're not wearing. They're he's literally in shorts, right? There's no pads, nothing like that, right? Yeah, I mean, it's shorts and t-shirt, and that's that's you know essentially the pro day uniform. Aside from Johnny Manziel, like a decade ago, decided to wear shoulder pads and a helmet, which... Uh, oh, man. I mean, we should have known, Mark. We yeah. should have known then. Yeah, that's like the oh. mistake number 63 along the line of Johnny Mel's, uh, Manziel's ascension and then oh, de-ascension from the NFL. It's good. It's good. Yeah. So uh, I don't think anyone's done that since. Uh, certainly not Caleb. But he, um, you know, he was out there, I think, first off, you know, you get to see him outside of the uniform. I think it it shows you a little something about him. Like you look at his frame. This is sturdy looking dude. Like now he's not the biggest guy out there. He's, you know, 6007, which is just over six foot, just under six foot one, right? Six feet and seven eighths. And I think he had actually measured in six one and an eight. So for whatever reason, the measurement was a, a you know, a quarter of an inch different at the pro day, which isn't that big a deal, right? It's we're talking about minuscule things here. He's 212 pounds. He is a physically built dude. And you look at his lower half, you look at his calves, like this guy, I mean, look, I know it sounds kind of funny to be talking about players that way, but you know, it's part of the conversation about Jaden Daniels um, yeah. in, in the opposite way. And so, you know, I think, um, you know, Caleb has shown a durability and, and I think you see that in a sturdiness with his, with his frame. And then here's the thing. This was not like your Zach Wilson or your Josh Allen, where there were just those, kind of wow throws all over the place and all that. This was a controlled and a measured approach from Caleb Williams, right? Maybe even bordering on conservative 
mm. which is kind of ironic because mm. that's not the way that he plays. <laughs> this, is, this is a guy that turns down, you know, an easy first down to go for the home run ball, right. And to make a creative play. Um, but I don't hold any of that against him. I, you know, I think, you know, off schedule kind of became on brand for him. Um, but that does not mean that he cannot operate within the confines of the pocket. There's plenty of that evidence on the tape out there. And that's mostly what he kind of showed us today was mm -hmm. the pocket, um, you know, maybe some slight movement here and there, but getting the back foot hits ball comes out. And for the most part, you know, I'd say 98% of it was on the money where it had to be, whether his receiver ended up catching it or not. So uh, I thought like my buddy, Daniel Jeremiah, who's out there with me, put it best. This was a proof of life pro day. <laughs> Got a pulse. He's in good shape. Right. Looks good. Uh huh. And all you check all the the, the remaining boxes. Yeah. Go. Right. He didn't have to go crazy. Well, I think it might have been. I mean, I don't know if that was his plan to be quote unquote you know conservative out there talking about Caleb yeah. Williams, just sort of the way you're describing it. I'm just paraphrasing, yeah. but it could have been too, just to kind of show look. You all know the crazy stuff I can do. I think yes. some people are concerned about can he do the simple stuff, the fundamental stuff when a drive calls for a bunch of runs and passes to your running back, can you do that as well? I think that there might be some concern in NFL GM's heads that can he do – I think it's a big deal, but I think that maybe that was part of what they're doing there. Is that out yeah. of the realm of possibility? I, no, I would say that, I mean, and, uh, and again, uh, you know, one of our buddies, Steve Weich was down there on the field um, yes. and, you know, we talked to Steve a little bit who had talked to some of the bears folks that were there said, by the way, they'd also, they've been there since Monday um, talking with Caleb Williams is this is Wednesday as we are chatting. And so they've been there for 48 hours getting a, again, a better feel for this player, certainly after moving on from Justin Fields over the weekend. And so like, maybe we should have known that this was when it was going to happen, right? The Fields trade, knowing that Caleb and knowing that the, the trip was coming. I mean, it yeah. all kind of, the timing, Interesting. it Interesting. all kind of starts to make sense a little bit. Yeah. Right? Because how many of those conversations, yeah. right, that they're going to be having with, with Caleb in this scenario, Fields is still on the roster, is like, well, what's the deal with Justin? How is this going to work? And so now they avoid all that. The runway's clear. Mm, Go get that's a Caleb. great point. That's yeah. a really good point. Because, you know, in our heads here, the talking point was always the draft. Like, yeah, it's got to be gone before the draft or maybe the day. I mean, then it yeah. got to that point. But, yeah, this could be a bit as simple as <laughs> we don't want to deal with this. Yeah. Right. right. We know we're going to be there for, for two days. Like, let's, you know, let, let's uh, let's make this, you know, nice and easy. So, um so I thought that was interesting. And, uh, and then, yeah, it, it was his design to, and his quarterback who's Will Hewlett. Um, you know, I think I mentioned that they've been working. I don't know actually where they've been working. I know he's based out of Jacksonville, but, um, uh, Hewlett is, but he's worked with Anthony Richardson, John Wolford, Nathan Peterman, um, and Brock Purdy. Mm -hmm. And so those are the guys, they put the whole thing together. And the focus was to throw from the pocket okay. because yeah, who cares if, you know, he's, you know, has a, a big boot action. He's rolling out to his left, throwing 70 yards back to his right. Um, we've seen that on tape. Yeah. It's cool I mean, to we, see. It's fun. It is cool. It is yeah. fun. I, I love it. I love, but believe me, I love it. I mean, I yeah. loved Zach Wilson's pro day more than most. And obviously <laughs> that is, that is not translated, but I'll eat that one. It was a lot yeah. of entertainment on that day. Um, if you need to work through that, we can work through that <laughs> right here, Brett. This, this is what the podcast yeah. is for, man. Yeah, I mean, look, again, I love the pro day circuit. I think it's super cool. I think it's a great opportunity to kind of see these guys throw it around and see what they want to showcase because I think it does tell the story about the narrative that they want people to leave with. But, um, yeah, that one didn't work out at BYU. Uh, <laughs> also, that day, oddly enough, that same day was the day the 49ers mortgaged the farm to move up to number three to then yeah. eventually take Trey Lance, Trey which Lance. also also didn't didn't work out. So that, was, that wasn't a great day. Okay, black <laughs> history. <laughs> let's let's just leave it at that. Yeah, um, yeah. So this was much better. This was a he and you know Caleb ended the day um, on like a beautiful sixty yard rainbow bomb dropped right in a bucket. You know for a would be touchdown. I think it was Brendan Rice on the opposite side who he threw twelve touchdowns to this last year. So um, I, he checked all the boxes for me. Like he didn't run. I don't know how fast he is, um, but. I don't, he's plenty fast enough to elude the best of the best of college football. 
Um, I think he maybe tones that down. Like he tones some of the ruggedness of it down. I don't know that you want to see, as you guys know, in Chicago, I don't know that you want to see him taking all those big hits, no, um, that sort of thing, breaking tackles. Yeah. Um, so again, I just, I thought it was an overall win and look, the runway's clear. I'd be shocked right now if the bears don't take Caleb Williams at number one overall. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I agree. Yeah. And they, they seem to be setting the stage with some of the moves that they made, including the acquisition of Keenan yes. Allen from the chargers. How about him being out there, man? I thought that was kind of cool. Um, now Caleb actually said afterwards to us that he's known Keenan for a while, obviously being in LA Keenan was, you know, with the chargers. And so yeah. they've, they've kind of been, quote unquote, on the scene, you know, for a little while and together. And, and so they've known each other. They got a chance to kind of talk a little bit. Matt Eberflus was right there, you know, listening in on all that. Ryan Poles was out there. And look, Ryan, you know, Ryan had other things to do too. You know, I mean, like he could be evaluating Marshawn Lloyd. Yeah. You know, running back at USC is one of the best in the class. He could be evaluating Brendan Rice and Todd yes. Washington, the receivers, you know, a little bit further down the line, probably, you know, early day three uh, into the fourth round, fifth round type of thing. So, you know, he's got a lot on his plate. Plus, yeah, potentially, you know, putting his reputation on the line to go get a player at number one in Caleb Williams. So um, multifaceted type of day. Obviously, Caleb was the main attraction, certainly from a Bears perspective. I'd be kind of curious, though, like Dan Quinn was there. Cliff Kingsbury was there, yes. kind of brain trust in Washington. Cliff, you know, was on the USC staff last year, so knows mm -hmm. Caleb very well. Um, like, what are they thinking? They're sitting mm -hmm. there at two, and they're like, God dang it. You know, like, we just, we're not going to, we don't, we can't get this guy. They're like, um, are they just there to be like, is there anything we can do? Right. Is there right. By showing up here, is that cool? Is that is that possible? I mean, look, you got to, and, and the Adam Peters, their new GM is there too. And look, they're evaluating the other players that are there. You know, of let's course. be honest about that too. But they're doing their due diligence, you know, because yeah, there's, even if it's a 1% chance, there's a 1% chance that yeah. Caleb Williams might be available for him at number two. And you better be ready for that possibility because, you know, you can't leave any stone unturned when it comes to the draft and when it comes to the work that you have to do on a player, you're going to ultimately want to end up paying. Like you want, that's the kind of funny thing to think about. Like if things work out, I want to pay this guy $50 million a year. You know, I want to pay this guy a half a billion dollars. So you got to do all that work on them. And that's what they're doing. Elliot Wolf, Patriots was that were there too. Um, but obviously the biggest decision in the draft is, is really in my mind going to be what happens, you know, is it Drake may or Jaden Daniels, but for the bears, I thought it, this day went about as, as good as you could imagine. Yeah, man. That's a good question too. Yeah. I, I am, uh, I'm sure that, I don't know, Rhett, do you do mock drafts or, you oh, yeah. no, I don't have one out yet. Okay. Mine, mine okay. is going to come out, uh, second week of April. So second week of April. Okay. I'm a one and done guy. One and done. You know, <laughs> I'm not like all these others out here who's like, you know, like I'm going to throw 12 different scenarios at the wall and see what sticks. Okay. I'm going to give one shot at this thing and we're going to try to get it right. But it doesn't, you it doesn't. I'm are like, living right because my company, they, while they didn't demand I do it, they're like, yeah. Hey, can you do a, can you do a mock, mock draft? You know, and I was like, yeah, why not? So I did it. And they're like, Hey, like maybe in a few weeks you could do another one. And I'm like, yeah. oh man, yeah. I'm a real, I'm a real mock draft guy now. They want a 2.0 out of me, right? You're a mock drafter, Mark. And yeah. I, you know what? I, it looks good on you, buddy. It does. <laughs> Put that on the resume. Okay. <laughs> I will ask me about anybody. No, don't, don't, don't do, don't do that. Don't do that. Yeah. Uh, hey, Rhett, I tell you what, man, I would yeah. love to maybe in April, yeah. um, you come on again. Let's come on it. the podcast or come on the radio on the score yeah. and we can talk about your, your uh, mock draft and my two sure. I might be at 3.0 by that point. You're going to you know? be like four ahead of me by that. <laughs> I mean, the way this thing's going, uh, but I'm all in for it. Let's do it. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Rhett, thank you so much, man. My Couldn't pleasure. have had a better guest than you. Thank you, Rhett. Appreciate it. That is Rhett Lewis um, of the NFL Network. He just happened to have hosted the coverage of USC's Pro Day up close with Caleb Williams. Some great insight right there. We thank him for coming out. We thank you for listening to The Daily Score. For our executive producer, Ray Diaz, I am Mark Grody. We'll talk to you tomorrow on The Daily Score.